You're telling me you're not a fan of the thumbnail? <laughs> Go ahead, explain that problem. I've been giggling to myself about that thumbnail, chucking it up early just to see if I get some reactions for it. <laughs> Bonjour, no. Bonjour, no. Hola. All right. <clears throat> How are we all doing? Who's here with us? I can see a few viewers already hanging out. I like to see we've got Marie. Who else is hanging out with us this afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world? What's up, Kevin? How are you doing? Hola. Kevin, did you act, did you, I know you said you weren't gonna get it, but did you end up giving in and getting the new Pokemon or not? I'm hoping there's not too much reverb with this mic. Cool, so today, I've not drawn anything like this before. I, I, uh, well, not drawn anything like this, but the idea of like a, a bird's eye sort of view um, of uh, this really nice little beach scene. I, I love all the colors in there, so I think it'd be something really nice just to try and put together, <coughs> which will be fun. And uh, yeah, something a bit warmer than the cold ones. What's up, Milo, how are you doing? Uh, I know you haven't picked up the new game yet. I am loving that game. It's so good. It's like everything I wanted when I was a kid. It's a great game. Cool. Let's just start getting into it. Uh, sketching. So I'm going to start with sort of the whole process. And rather than me take the colours from the palette, I'm going to sort of show you how I would normally go about doing that and sort of gauging where to grab colours from maybe. Um, and what I my thought process is every single time when I create a palette sort of thing. Uh, so just that would be part of the design but typically when I'm working on this on my own I can I'll sort of create a sketch as a guide so I can see that that's like maybe three-fifths across so about three-fifths across we'll draw in a straight line to start with that's our guide because I see that all those rocks there kind of run on a line so we can sort of work with that we then have uh, said rock over here a little something like that it doesn't always have to match either I've said this before in terms of um, yeah, just because you're working off of a reference photo as such doesn't mean that it has to match up directly to the image you can do whatever you want with it what's up Tarkizio how are you doing my list is not so bad a lot of work a short business trip and a cra in crazy times at my work didn't you say it's really busy this time of year Milo as well uh, I can see that with the there's a little bit of the ocean, sort of the the very sort of closest bit of the water onto the land, kind of runs along here, gets really close to this rock, and then just sort of swoops around it. So I'm going to come around there, just try and sort of sweep it into there, and then we will try to gauge the rocks. So there's kind of like a rock here another big rock here we can work in this one here at the top followed by another one sort of there again doesn't have to match up we're just trying to replicate something like this there's another one in the middle and then we've got these sort of main ones here so we've got these sort of shapes here. We've got another one down here too. Oh, 
What pencil is this? Because this is great. A 6B pencil. This is nice. Oh, I think it's because it's maxed out on size. I never really used the pencils bar just the occasional sort of, well, the sort of sketches and stencils. So there's that. By the looks of it, I think that's pretty much everything we need to cover. There's obviously a green area up here in this sort of space. And then in the water, we've kind of got like a lighter patch that runs around here and into here. So I'm kind of just sort of giving myself guidelines as to where I know I need to add some color into. We've got kind of a, a darker area up here and a little bit of a darker area in this sort of space. Now that doesn't look like much, but this is gonna be sort of a guide from me. So I can lower that opacity down and then we can just start hand, hand selecting the uh, colors. So we'll, there we go, empty palette. So let's make that image a little bit bigger so we can zoom in on what we wanna do. So there's a couple of different colors. So what I would do is if I start off on the left hand side, I always try to pick out maybe like three different tones. So if I drop my finger into that space there, let's see what color that is. It's almost completely black, but I can probably see that there's a couple of lighter sections. There's a slightly lighter gray. So I will just grab the darkest tone. There's also a mid tone, which is this gray. So I'll just drop that there. They look very close to one another. They're actually slightly different. And then zooming in, if it will allow me, into the green areas, yeah, it's very pixelated, but you can kind of see that like here is ever so slightly lighter than these really vibrant greens here. So I'll just grab one of those lighter tones in there, and then we'll go for our highlight tone. So we've kind of got our base color, which is the dark black, followed by then a little bit of sort of light that peeks through, and then the greenery area on top has two colors then, so we can use that. We'll move across to, let's move on to the beach. So the beach itself, the main color is of course right here in the middle. So we'll pop a middle tone there. We've then got, if I look at that image, I keep doing that. Uh, let's have a look. We've got a couple of different tones in that middle section. This one here, for example, has like three different colors. You can just about see that on the camera. There's a more, uh, probably a drier patch there and then a slightly wet patch. And then there's another tone here. So I'm gonna grab all of those just to try and give me some variation in the sand. And then we've got the shadow color as well. So the shadow, I'm not sure I actually need to grab a shadow as such uh, because I can just pick black potentially later on or this sort of gray color. Um, so we'll leave that. Uh, we then get into the water and then you've kind of got these darker tones here. You can see the difference immediately between these two. So I would grab this color just in here. You see, it's not like I'm not searching for a specific pixel or anything like that. We're just trying to um, just grab what we can. That's like the, the most sort of average color there, pretty much. So I'm gonna leave a gap because I wanna also um, grab a little bit of what is on the water's edge there. Now it's not quite white and you should never try to use white, but that is the breaking of the wave there. And then let's have a look. So we've got this darker patch followed by again, a light patch. So I'm gonna grab that color as well. Pop that beside that dark. Cause I, I'm kind of creating, if you imagine the image, I always try to break up the palettes in like areas. So zones. So this is all the uh, top left area. Then we've got the beach and then literally the water beside it. And these kind of run in order of the image almost. Uh, if we zoom out. We've then got this really beautiful sort of greeny color here. So I'm gonna grab that one, pop that beside it. It then transitions into a teal color, which is just beside it before it gets into these really dark colors here. And then what I can do is move all the way across, grab some of the stone, which is a bit of a gray color. So I'll probably pop that underneath, kind of group these together and just pick out a few different tones. So we've got some darker tones in there. There's also some lighter tones where the rocks are underneath the water. So we'll grab them too, pop them beside. And then there's some really, really dark color again. And we don't have to use all of them, but this is what I would always typically do just before a, a um, like a stream or a tutorial. So that's 
our sort of beach followed by the water and then the only thing else we need to grab is a couple of this stone so for the stone we can probably use this top section of the palette we'll grab the median color which is going to be probably this sort of gray in the middle if you grab a slightly darker tone sometimes that's a good thing if you grab a slightly darker color you can uh, you've got more room to add highlights on top so again I'm going to go down into the lighter area grab a color pop that in the palette and then as it gets really close to this edge, it kind of runs into a bit of a yellow, almost, like a bit a bit sandy almost, potentially even is, but we'll grab that color and pop it beside it. And then we'll go in and grab some of the shading colors. So we've got like a dark tone on this ledge. And then we've got the very dark tone, which is a bit of a blue, which is gonna look really nice. And I think, I think that's everything we could maybe go into here where these greens are quite bright so again we've got that sort of rock area above I'm gonna actually just populate this bottom left corner of the palette with some more color so I'm gonna grab these greens and just zoom in right in the pixels and you'll be able to see that there's a dark tone in between the greens grab that that's your base color for the green area and then grab maybe one or two different greens so bright green and then the very brightest green that you can find and there you go you've got three colors for that area so that's kind of my process typically on how that's what a lot of people ask me is how I go about sort of collecting those colors and that's typically the process to be honest so we'll scale this down we'll start working so let's just drop the opacity down of that and then you always go in for your base colors so we Lately I've been trying to sort of explain this and sort of teach this. I'm going to use the medium brush um, to just paint in your foundations. It's almost like a really slow process of like building in some really washed out big blocks of colour and then you paint on top and then, well I say paint all the time, but you draw or you paint on top depending on what it is you're creating. So for example, we'll undo that, reduce that size down and I'll just lock in this area up here because I know that that is all the stonework and also all of the um, sort of leafy area so we'll block that in we'll create a little base for that area you can do it on separate layers you can do it on one layer we'll grab the base color for the beach which I think was the first color there and we'll start to just block in that color so by doing it like this you can you've got like a backdrop for your details to sit on top of. That's kind of a hard thing to try and explain, but what I mean is like with the leatherwood, sometimes you'll end up with like little gaps in between your, um, in between your uh, brush and your, your strokes on the screen. So this just acts as filler for that content. Now Kevin, I think has just asked, do I ever use the automatic process for building a palette from a photo? Um, no. I don't, because I know what I want to grab, for example, the beach there, I can see the colors I want to grab. I don't, sometimes I don't like leaving it up to the palette, uh, sorry, the automatic palette creator. And I'll tell you why I also don't like it is it's not, you have to decipher how the palette has been created and what color goes where. You're having to like look at the palette and go, okay, so, where does that blue go and like this blue here is actually the shading color for that rock but if you were to look at the palette you'd go oh dark blue it's probably in the ocean i'll just use that in the darkest areas but that's not the color there's actually no blue they're all greens so for me it's like i've laid this palette out now how i know it works we've got the top trees we've got the beach foundation colors we've got this nice gr bright green that goes on the rock there and then we've got the um, what colors were these again? Oh, these were the rocks at the front here, followed by uh, the beach running into the shallow water, turning into the green, and then we've got the really dark tones. So I know what I've created and where things should go. So that's typically why I don't use the automatic one. It's, it's good if you've got a very simple design, I would say, but for something as complicated as that photo, it could grab anything. It could grab stuff we're not really interested in either sort of thing so um yeah that would be that would be my explanation as to why i don't do that there's nothing wrong with doing it to be fair it's just if if you want to be in more control over your um 
palette, I would suggest not using it. And we're going to blend out this darker patch into these areas as well, a little bit around that rock. Yeah, you could argue exactly what Milo just said there as well, that pretty much a lot of the time um, the palette is too big, unnecessarily big. Um, you don't need all those colours. Uh, we have those two colours and then it fades into the green, which is going to be a really, really interesting colour to try and work with. But this is going to be a bit of a base colour into these areas, maybe around these rocks. Again, we can use the photo as a guide. I can do whatever I want to it. We can blend those colours in elsewhere. Move into these colours a little bit more. And because we're overlapping, we're actually building up quite a dark area there. Mm, that's fine for a minute. And for a moment, I'm going to go ahead and grab this tone here on the far right and just sort of blend that in a little bit. Sort of blocking it in, and then we'll block in our rocks as well. So the rock. Uh, First colour is always the base colour followed by highlights or shadows. That's what I like to typically do with my palettes if you want to lay yours out that way. Um, let's reduce this down a little bit. Anyway, how is everybody? How's everybody doing? Kevin, you mentioned that it makes sense. That's good. Hopefully, um, maybe you could even lay your own ones out a little bit like this. But you'll, if you do sort of go about creating your own palettes there, you'll want to sort of isolate sections that you know where things go, sort of thing, if that makes sense. You can break up the palette into areas that are of... Um, interest in the photo or the reference photo or the whole design. I'm letting this nice medium brush get a little bit wobbly there so I can just about get some nice rocky shapes in there. Block that in. Let's block in this one as well. Cool, that's that. I'm gonna keep the details a little bit simple on the beach, such as like these rocks and stuff. I may introduce these two, in fact, um, just so that's roughly sort of down here. Uh, just introduce some sort of rocky shape into here, and then maybe another one up here. I wanna keep the rest otherwise pretty simple, not try and um, make it too complex. We we'll see how that sort of rolls. We've got a lot of sort of details to maybe be adding in the rocks in the water and stuff. And really, I've never sort of painted this direct, not paint, I say we'll say painting at the minute, so just roll with that. But that sort of idea of sort of blocking it in um, and then doing all of these details on the ocean, I've not really done that before in terms of the top-down view of an ocean so it'd be interesting to see if I can replicate how those actually look <clears throat> Kevin says I used the automatic palette feature but then I ended up making a palette anyway to organize the colors that I wanted to and actually use exactly exactly and that's a hundred percent my thought process it's just using everything that you want to use rather than what that pulls out I think for people that just want to get a casual guide as to what to take fair dues, use it for sure, um, but if it's uh, something you specifically want to replicate then yeah, you, you might need to manually go in and grab a few bits. Okay that looks good, let's just roll a little bit more into here, maybe darkening that up a little bit, cool, this will be fun. 
Let's start on the left hand side. Let's work over the top of this area and I'll probably create a new layer and then just sort of use that maybe as one, one layer maybe. We'll try and mix in between like the, a few different brushes, maybe the Aurora, maybe the Leatherwood. Let's see how that all goes. I'm gonna zoom in in the top right corner. Let me take a look at how we can replicate this. We've got two more streams, guys, until we are done for uh, the year. There won't be any more after, so two more streams and then we'll, um, what's going on? Uh, two more streams and then we're done and back in the new year. I actually can't believe it's Christmas already. I only feel like I had this all set up with the stream and stuff like this not that long ago. Oh, it's my glove. That's what it is. I feel like the whole screen was just being really, really unusable and unresponsive. No, probably the glove. That's a little bit better. What's everybody's plans for Christmas? Anybody doing anything exciting? Anything fun? Just standard seeing family or friends. This actually runs a little bit further down and then just decides to branch back out a little bit more. You're not ready for it to be Christmas, in what way? Sorting everything. I'm just trying to block in again some color. See what we could, see if we can get the the basic sort of shapes a little bit. Work it out from there. I'm on call for work over Christmas this year, so sitting around hoping the phone doesn't ring. Oh, for sure. What is it you do, Kevin? I feel like firefighter, but I'm not. I'm not too sure. I'm not too confident about that one. Too much work for you, Milo, yeah. You said you work in retail, didn't you? So I can appreciate that. I used to work in retail. Mainframe database technical support. See, oh, Firefighter was close though, right? Okay, let's try and get that in. Let's try. It looks a bit odd right now because I know it's really dark. So I'll try to um, plop in some color here and there with this gray maybe. Although this gray doesn't seem to be doing too much. I think it's because the, the base color is already there. I think it'll look a bit more Correct once we get that darker tone in. And these ones here, they can't be too uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Translucent. They need to be of a certain level of opacity. Visiting the stores to supervise everything and according to my design and plans, then. Eesh. Do you have to do, when do you have to do that, Milo? At what point? Like, throughout the whole of it? Okay, so this is interesting. I need to sort of blob in some color here. I'm probably gonna have to do my old hack away at it sort of treatment, but just randomly scattering in some greens, seeing what we can drop in. Oh, 
damn. Milo, that sounds like awful in a like a great way that obviously is a lot of uh, a lot of work, but in terms of uh, a lot of uh, what's the word I'm looking for responsibilities and stuff. But yeah, that sounds mental at the same time. Ah, oh, got you, got you. So I think what I could do with doing is if I duplicate this, can I change the scatter? Uh, See, that's now gone completely the opposite way. Okay, that's kind of nice. That gives me a lot more sort of a speckled look instead. I might actually undo all that and redo that because that's a little bit less sort of large horizontal shapes. That gives me a little bit more space, uh, a little bit more variation in the drops of the color. When are you back in, Milo? Are you back in straight after? Also, whoever's hanging out with us, be sure to join in with the chat. We're open to having a chat. That's what all these live streams are about, really. It's just hanging out um, while I draw something, really. So if you're new here and just want to just sort of hang out with the chat, get to know the community, feel free to jump in. Let me know what you're up to for Christmas. If you're doing anything cool or exciting. I've got a couple of busy weeks now in terms of Joel Create stuff to get done. I want to get a few designs done for January just so that I'm not really working um, over that time like so drawing and stuff because we've got like family down and stuff and um, it'd be good if I didn't have to to do this. And this leatherwood one is really nice this one gives the trees a nice scattering which is nice. Nice scattering which is nice. Nicely done. And then we've got a little bit more colour down here too. Cool. Let's maybe try going back over it again. And maybe breaking them up just a tiny bit. Getting some other... You know what I like to do. 75% just sort of run over the top of it. Break them up a little bit. Get some extra shadow tones in there. Get some extra highlights. So it kind of... Um, it kind of leaves... Leaves... And kind of uh, leaves behind the um, highlights a little bit by just hacking away into the top of it and we can also put some more greens in the darker areas but just keep them to a minimum essentially and again we don't have to follow the photo completely we could have this look really vibrant if we really wanted to I've had a lot of really good responses lately to um, the sort of 
again I keep calling them painting so we'll just roll with them this painting style of designs which is great because I've really enjoyed the end of this year in terms of like a, a, a style as such so I'm glad people are enjoying them uh, okay let's be sparing then with this highlight on any area that just about has some green left um, we can add in some nice green on top of these ones here we can add some green here just a sprinkle here and there what size is this let's set this to two percent um, let's also scatter some in there too we could be brave and add a lot of color but I want to be very sparing to start with and then go back over and um, see what see what we can come up with so be a bit sparing and then maybe we hack into it afterwards come back and then add in some further highlights on top again could even make this brush arguably if you want to spend even more time on it even smaller um, to add in some really fine leaves in these gaps I always say that I've tried to sort of keep that in the tutorials a little bit recently in terms of you know, if you want to spend a little bit longer doing you know certain little bits and bobs go for it you know you don't have to follow along with my um, pace or anything like that if you want to pause and just you know, really get a bit more intricate with the leaves there's so many so much time you can spend on filling out a design like this what's up Jesse how are you doing good to see you You were the fastest one today to uh, like my most recent uh, Patreon post. Saw you in there immediately with the like. Rapid fire. Cool. Let's roll with that for a bit. We could even go slightly brighter again and grab this like really bright yellow. I've got no idea how this is going to look, but we could just scatter on a couple here and there. Really small over here on the left. Just at the top of what I'm assuming is this tree, obviously. Just like a, a nice very small percentage and just scatter in some more color. Some extra little leaves in there. Lovely stuff. Go back in, maybe grab the, the grey, or the green even. Get in those areas, maybe even the black as well. Get back in there and break them up. Always try to break up your highlights, don't get too precious over them. Especially in my tutorials, we just end up breaking them up anyway. Don't we? And then hacking away, as I like to try to explain. Eh, that's looking pretty good for a minute. We'll move on. We'll move on to this rock here, followed then by the beach, I think. And I'm very well, thank you for asking, Jesse. I hope you are well as well. Uh, let's do it on a separate layer, just because we can. Let's uh, get some... I'm just gonna try and continue using this brush where possible. If it leaves like a little gap here and there, that's fine. Oh, blimey, I'm red off. straights a little bit too far we've done it on a separate layer anyway so we could go back in and just adjust that in a second it may give us some nice angular shapes uh, eraser let's go calligraphy I'm on a line and start hacking away So I'm just trying to tidy up a little bit of where these uh, 
little shapes have just gone astray a little bit. The odd little one's fine, but only a little one. What's up, Shimaz? Let's carry on. Let's add in some extra colour. I've got a question for you folks. Maybe a hypothetical one, maybe not. We'll find out, but um, would you use another app that wasn't Procreate to draw on your iPad if there were tutorials created for such thing um, for you to follow? What do you reckon? By myself, maybe, maybe, hypothetically, of course. Are you, are you, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? set on forever maybe using procreate are you open to the concept are you just happy with procreate and don't really fancy learning anything else all of the above are completely acceptable answers they're just um i can understand why some people you know they don't want or they don't want to spend the time again to get to know another program um when um you know we can just uh, carry on using procreate and continue to master that one Uh, Vectinator, let's tried that one in the past, I have, I have. Um, I'm thinking I'll just go medium brush for this. And um, are you saying there, Marie, that you wouldn't? I'm assuming from that. Again, there are no incorrect answers. Happy with Procreate, however, Vectinator catches your eye. I used to draw in Photoshop. That's Marie. Okay, let's get a bit more uh, aggressive a little bit with some shadows and stuff in here. So I can kind of gauge there's like a rock here. We come around that edge a little bit, a couple of dark edges maybe, and then we can really darken this up. I'm gonna have to try and do this all in one motion potentially. Uh, Carrie says, I tried Adobe drawing apps but found Procreate much easier to use for sure. Procreate is super intuitive to use. There's... Procreate is a really interesting app for the fact that there's so much you can do in this app. But if you were to just download the app and take a look at it, then it's so simply designed. It's um, it's It's actually ridiculous how intuitive it is to use for new users because it's just so easy to use it's so easy to look at there's not a lot going on it's you know here's your main tools at the top top right here's your color if you want to start cracking on you can crack on immediately with just knowledge of that but if you want to get into your selections and your adjustments and your cursor options, they're there if you want to just explore a little bit further and then as you get more and more confident with just your abilities to draw and whatnot, you, you start to build up that confidence in you know, exploring and that's the best thing about it really is, is how intuitive and easy it is to do um, because they've just created such a good user interface. I've been doing a bit of research into other apps and um, they just, some of them look absolutely awful. They just don't have the same user experience in the slightest. Okay, so I can see that's get, coming along nicely. Let's get a bit brave. Go back to painting. 
artistic even. Go back to the favorite leather wood. Kevin says sketchbook, shadow draw, paper inked, sketches pro, lines, sketch, art range, graphic, they're all in my drawing folder of pro creators on my home screen. Yeah, I, uh, I'm totally on board with that. So here, I'm just trying to like block in, I know this area here is going to soon be covered anyway, uh, but try and block in some sort of extra additional ridges and shadows, etc., in the rock before we move into then just replacing them with much smaller versions of the base color. Try to create little grooves and divots and leave little bits of residue behind to create really good amount of detail in here. Again, should, we don't want to perfect this immediately in terms of we don't want to um, try to spend you know all of our time trying to perfect this one rock you know we'll we'll crack on we, we get the sort of basics in and then we can come back and revisit stuff make that a little bit brighter down there uh, and then we have these greens so I could put them on a separate layer but I could just paint them on top Let's go for this one because this one had a really nice random scattering to it. So let's um, be brave. Drop in a nice scattering of colour. Go a bit bigger than that and get a bit closer to that top edge. Push this out a little bit more. Again, doesn't have to be pixel perfect to the reference. We're just oh, blocking that in on top there. Uh, Marie says Procreate had more options than Ibis and Adobe Draw. The thing is, with like, and again, I've been doing a lot of research into other alternatives, but they they all tried to replicate, by the looks of it, a desktop experience of like a Photoshop or anything like that. Whereas Procreate just went, let's just keep things simple. Let's not have buttons everywhere, windows for everything, you know. Like Photoshop, you know, I use Photoshop every day for my actual job, and there's so many things on there that it it could be extremely overwhelming for a new user, and especially for me to then try and teach someone to one not be overwhelmed, and you know, be able to manage and tackle these things. Um, it's quite tricky, but when a user feels comfortable in an app and it doesn't look too nuts. It's easier for people to teach and therefore more people want to use the app because there's a lot more resource out there there's a lot more uh, content again looking into other apps and stuff there's nothing comes close in terms of volume that procreate does the market for procreate tutorials and any sort of I, when i say tutorials i don't mean like a draw along with me i mean as in like everything in between as well you know the um draw along with me is tutorials on just small things how to do x y and z the resources are just insane but these other apps just don't get it yeah adobe is 100 percent overwhelming for sure for, for new people, you know, once you get into it and maybe again, you, you just sort of maybe just go, no, you tell you what, I am gonna tackle this, I can do this. And you get into some tutorials, you know, it can be quite easy to use, but it's definitely something you've, I've personally picked up a lot over a long period of time, if that makes sense. Like when I was a, when I say a kid, I know that winds people up when I say that, but when I was a kid in school and stuff and uh, you know, messing around in Photoshop in my own time, creating whatever, they, um, you pick up sort of the rules and etc and how everything sort of works gradually I would hate to have to learn Photoshop or something like uh, scratch brand new like day one just be like yeah do you want to get to grips with uh, Photoshop and then we'll come and have a chat sort of later on be like, oh, you, 
What? Um, oh, that looks nice. We're just going to break up this bush a little bit by adding in some greys here and there, which is just the stonework underneath. Um, trying to sort of chop away into it, create gaps in there, make it less of a solid shape. Leave some space for the rock underneath. I'll get braver with uh, shadows, etc. later. But for now, I think that's okay. Maybe add in some. I feel like this grey could do with being a little bit darker as a base colour so that I've got something more to work with with regards to highlights. If your base colour is too bright, your highlights can't do their job. You are forcing them into a, a light area already so they can't stand out, you know? That's already looking a little bit better. Some shadow around the back area here. Maybe even introduce some of these nice blue tones in here. Just break them up a little bit, especially on the back area. That makes it look like the shadow just rolls off the back a little bit more. We'll get really brave eventually with blocking in that sort of colour. Um, okay, we're fine for a minute. Let's move on, I think, to the beach and try to sort of work in some colours in there. Again, I'm probably going to slap it on a separate layer, see what we can come up with for the beach. But we've got a few different tones. We've got the base colour, we've got a slightly lighter colour. Um, let's have a, let's maybe experiment while we're doing this sort of thing. Maybe we've like, I like the plimps old brush. I've used that before. That could look quite nice with this kind of effect. Maybe just pop it up to 100% and just... Yeah, that's going to look nice. Just some extra touch. So is this the lighter colour? Okay, so this is the darker colour. And the darker colour is going to be a little bit sort of closer to the, the water line. Okay, let's not get too crazy with that opacity. Let's drop that back down again. Get into some of these grooves over here before we add in shadows. Um, I can see that that rounds off down the bottom area. Lovely stuff. Let's get into. Can you see that change in colour? Yeah, you can. Let's uh, let's make a mental note of the pimpsel brush. So what I always do, again, if you're following along with sort of start to finish in terms of how I go about doing this, in terms of creating a whole sort of palette, etc., is um, when I draw in my own time, I take screenshots religiously. Uh, just to remember small things like what brush I used at certain points um, again pro creator listening please for the love of God give us um, canvas specific history or canvas specific favoriting or canvas specific anything just something where when we've got a when we're drawing a design we have the option to decide to favorite a brush or something that's just in there just even if a li little pop up on the screen just to say do you want to favorite this globally so meaning throughout the whole app or do you want to just just favorite it um in in this particular project that's all i want so that we can remember what the hell we were doing when we were last in the project all right Kevin says, I think Procreate is pretty much the standard now. I just opened the App Store and Procreate was right there on the home screen under Essentials, yeah. And it's always in um, the App Stores as well. It's always open in the App Stores. Um, they love it. There's a, there must be some sort of, um, uh, not agreement, but some sort of funding, I would imagine, or some sort of care package should I say it's probably a better word for it uh, from Apple to Procreate I reckon uh, I can't see my stencil now too well let's drag that up to the top there we go we've got some guidelines there um, I want to just paint back in now this water line because it got a little bit lost in there where I got added in the, the water so again this is another thing so as I'm making my way through this is of course the water sits on top of the sand so 
you want to block in your sand first and then go back in with the water because you don't want to be drawing your sand up to your water edge that you're already happy with and then having to sort of work around that line you know trying not to run over the work that you're already happy with you want to um, you know do the sand first so that you have got that in place and then you can just draw over the top where the water makes its way in towards land a little bit more so let's block in a little bit more of this color in here that looks nice we've got a little bit more of a wave here by the looks of it another sort of mini crashing wave and always with your with the color that you're currently working with block that in a little bit bigger and then you can go back over with your colors and then go over the top of that to where they should be, if that makes sense. So I've made that little bit area, little bit of area a little bit bigger so that now I can go in with this color here and just refine those edges. I'm just gonna get rid of that a little bit more. I'm pushing right up towards the water's edge a little bit. And Carrie says, I took a Photoshop class in grad school, so I have the experience with their apps, but as I'm just now learning to draw, I prefer focusing on the skills required rather than the app. Yeah, that's um, that's definitely something that's, I find that's quite an interesting topic as of right now. And there's also a trend on TikTok right this second where people, I don't know what the app is. I think it might even be CapCut and it some sort of ai generator is creating like these really awesome um profile pictures for people that look so cool they look like a really artistic style um but there's it's all generated for them and unfortunately it you know it might even sort of prevent people from picking up say procreate if they can just get that effect from an app in a second sort of thing so uh, but what I'm referring to is is actually like learning the skill rather than uh, using uh, like the AI or anything like that. I get asked that all the time, like, do you think AI is going to replace your tutorials and how to draw and stuff? Will people even bother with them? And, and I'm like, well, you know, what are you achieving? It's good fun and it's good to mess around in those for sure. Like I've used the Dali uh, app site. And um, you know, it's never going to replace the standard. You know, I suppose digital art could re could have been said to be replacing physical art, but has it? No. People still want to grab an easel or start drawing or painting, you know, whatever they want to do. So I don't think it ever necessarily replaces something. I think it just gives other people a different opportunity in a different space to maybe pick something up. That's looking a lot better. We're getting there. You can sort of see the wave lines a little bit better now, yeah? I like that. Now, what do we do about these shadows? Do I go in with the shadows and um, go in with black and just lower the opacity down? Not my favorite thing to do, but we could try that. Um, quite enjoying this plimsoll brush. I may continue with it, but I can see that it's kind of like the tree line, so maybe I do have to go in with like the leather wood, maybe. Marie says, there's more enjoyment in making anything over just pushing a button, for sure. Absolutely, and that's a very good point, I guess, is you kind of miss out on what's the point of it. The point is to create something and uh, enjoy it and you know learn a skill and all that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think that kind of gets lost a little bit in that process. That yes, you can just very quickly um, press a button, as Marie said there, but you're, you, you don't gain anything out of it as, as such. Kevin says, I can see digital art as being an entry into physical media too. I've been doing stuff in my sketchbook again, which I've not done for a long time. Oh, that's awesome. And you are 100% correct. I, I, tr I believe that too. I think, I, think it, I think it sparks people's curiosity, doesn't it, a little bit more. I think it 
it definitely makes people think well you know I'm enjoying this I know what I can get out of this in terms of you know how good it is for people's you know, mental health and stuff and uh, escapism what you know can, what can I do in the real world with real media um, classic uh, artwork so yeah for sure that is a, a consideration for a lot of people now I made that very low that needs to be a lot lot larger but also maybe a bit of a blur to it like it's a bit too sharp that, oh, that looks nice a really nice soft um, I'm not sure if you can just just about pick that up on the screen but that looks very nice I'm happy with that I might even create another new layer lower this right down and just darken up under here a little bit more just try to create like a, a, a layering system to the shadows maybe so there's like a, a slightly darker version right underneath this tree line so it looks like quite a dark area maybe we go Gaussian blur on that too blur that right into the shadow area that looks a lot nicer maybe even increase that up that gives me the contrast I need now to sort of get that lighting across a bit more Kevin says, I can't figure out how to change the blending mode. <laughs> yeah, I, okay, yeah, so then you get into that conversation that like, like I do in the real world where I'm tapping things with two fingers to undo things and yeah, you are, you're in a lot less of a forgiving um, space by doing it obviously with the traditional sense. Yeah, a lot, lot more <laughs> forgiving. Can make as many mistakes as you like in here. Um, so now what I'm doing is just breaking up the edge of my tree line a little bit, just hacking away into it, breaking it up, and trying to create gaps, which the gaps will then sort of let through some of the ground underneath. Therefore, one making it less of a solid shape, but also um, just bringing through some of the ground underneath, which creates more realism. Uh, let's actually mask that instead. That's nice. I love how there's like a little bit of the sandy colour in that gap there. That looks really nice. Don't want to break it up too much, but just a little bit just to get rid of um, that slightly darker look. Now the only thing now immediately before I think I move on just so I can nail this rock down is the rock itself is far too um, soft in terms of its colors. So I'm gonna go in with the darkest tone now and get a bit uh, more uh, adventurous with painting this in. Arguably that is not that color and it's actually a different tone. It's probably a little bit more grayer I'm probably going to have to squeeze that in that gap there and remember that that is the position. And just get a bit more brave now. We're just rounding off these shadows on this edge. Trying to give this much more contrast. Contrast immediately brings things to life. Um, it catches your eye. You can define edges a lot better. That already looks a lot, lot better than it did a second ago. Let's get around this edge a little bit more. Blocking in that edge. There's not a lot of uh, definition really in there. So I can get nice and adventurous, dropping in some color here and there. In this sort of shaded groove area here of the rock, I can reinvent this how I want. Some sort of groove in there. That looks fine. We can introduce some darker little patches on the top here. Oh, let's redo that. A couple of more darker patches. Don't, the only thing I keep trying to do, not trying to do, I keep doing by accident, is um, adding in like mini details in the same uh, sort of rhythm. What I mean by that is, is like I keep adding things in 
that are constantly sort of repeating themselves. Like I need to learn uh, to vary up my angles a little bit more just to create, uh, you know, when I'm doing tiny little scatterings like that, not like a ton of horizontal lines, you know, put some in that are a bit more diagonal, you know, add a groove here in there that's a little bit more uh, against the grain that I was already drawing. So that's something I'm trying to learn to be, do, is be less repetitive. Can I get away with doing this on that layer? Is that the correct layer? Add the rock back in. Oh, it's the rock. Let's get back in with the calligraphy. So what I've done there is there's a couple of these tiny little flicks that we tried. I tried to tidy up earlier and they're still there, so they've just made the edge of the rock look a little bit off. That looks a lot better. I think I need to come back and do the trees afterwards. Hope you all get new iPads for Christmas. I don't think I'll be getting one this year. Oh yeah. Although, there's rumors for next year, that's what I'm quite interested in. Maybe it's a topic to talk about, but there's a new rumor of a large iPad, a like 16 inch, possibly 14, you know, some sort of size around that sort of space. And that one kind of catches my eye a little bit in terms of um, a future purchase maybe. I'm gonna drag this underneath the shadow so it's a bit more consistent with the lighting then. I don't need to do the lighting every single time. But yeah, a 14 or 16, I'm not sure if that's too big. Um, I've got no idea, um, but it's something that I definitely like the sound of. Big, big, I think because I'm lucky enough to have obviously the Sketchboard Pro um, and also like um, this desk, like an isolated space for drawing, um, I know I have the space for it. I think somebody with a 16 inch iPad for something just to like use on their lap or something is a bit too, it's, it's too big. But what do you guys think? You reckon that'd be great? Because if you, who's, has anyone got a 12.9 inch? Because what I'm gonna get at is like, when I see my friend's 12.9 inch iPad, I think this is huge. It feels enormous. But when I um, consider the option then of like, well, no, 14 or a 16 would be great. I'm thinking, oh my God, this thing's gonna be absolutely massive. I'm just trying to um, sharpen up these basic shapes that we drew in with more uh, refined shapes so that we've got something to work off of shortly when I get back into, well, start drawing in all of these basically try and create these shapes a little bit more rough up the edges make them less round and bubbly and make them a little bit more sharp and aggressive and you can see I'm not spending too much time on them in the sense of just I just want to get them blocked in go like that uh, Kevin oh hang on uh, Marie says I do it's the best uh, with a gr with a great stand. Is that the 12.9 you mean? I just think like if I had a massive canvas here, I would I would love it. It would feel like a massive like easel. It would just be huge. It's just big old canvas to have some fun on. And obviously, I would imagine if you buy like that one, the layer count would be like through the roof. It would be enormous. Uh, right, let's, let's try and do these rocks. I have no idea how these are gonna turn out, so maybe I just get uh, in some basic sort of colors and then work it out from there. Let's turn off the stencil for a second.
yeah let's get let's do that let's block in some basic uh, highlight edges of where the the highlights are sort of sitting on top of the rocks and get them all in and then add the shadows in or build in the midtones and that should give us a bit more of a better realistic look um, I'm not gonna go for super super detail because if I decide to teach this again I always have to simplify the process a little bit so I'm not simplify the process but simplify the design uh, Kevin I have the 12.9 inch and when I first got it I thought it was gigantic now it's just normal um, Kevin says again I'm with Marie I want the 12.9 m2 iPad so I see I get actually questioned about this probably once a week at the minute of why doesn't Joel, uh, Joel create why doesn't procreate work very well on the m2 and I, I don't work for Apple I've got no bloody idea why it's not optimized or if it isn't but yeah and I see it in like uh, procreate big uh, sort of groups on Facebook that people are complaining that it's very glitchy at the moment so I wonder if they've got like a well, I guess the 5.3 update may be you know full optimization for it but yeah people um, question me like I've got the answers also asking me like when I put my uh, procreate video up uh, 5.4 asking you know what I would like to see people asking me when's 5.3 out and I'm like I don't know I've got no idea so I still have a 12, I have an 11 inch um, 2018 iPad Pro and I mean I'm pretty happy with my layer count at the minute but like you said like the layer count would be enormous I mean the M2 ones I think are huge um, so I can't imagine how many layers that they all get. This point uh, I'm scratching in details as I like to call it sort of maybe scratching in the odd light patch here and there um, of these highlights and trying to like create like isolated areas where the rocks are facing the light I guess trying to follow a, our guide image a little bit with its areas of light but just sort of scratching it in a little bit more It'd be really nice to see them just increase the RAM in all the models to a much more significant, um, this is kind of like a really niche reason, but a more significant amount just so that like people picking up Procreate have got like a really large layer count in just even in the base models. Like I'm not talking about the pros at this point, it'd be great if they could put in a ton of RAM in the, uh, the base models so that there's more possibilities because especially when I started doing this I feel like everybody maybe had just started on like their procreate journeys a little bit more so like everybody wanted um, me to understand people's layer counts in tutorials and, and rightly so you know I should I should I should consider that when I'm doing them you know where in the designs can we save a, uh, a layer or two where can we um, you know midway through a tutorial can we chop something down into one layer maybe all these sort of questions but yeah it'd be cool to not have to consider that in the slightest okay i thought i was the only one i had to reinstall procreate back up into me 24 hours jeez every day i say to myself joe today's the day you just need to um I have like loads of hard drives for all my videos and stuff and like I, I always tried to say oh you'll, you'll be really good and every time you finish a video you will upload the palette and whatnot into and the canvas and all the, with everything into a folder did I act I need to <laughs> go back in and uh, add all of the canvases into their folder on the hard drive so that they're ready safe should I ever need them and then maybe even clear them off the iPad I don't know I do quite like having them on here though so I can just quickly jump in them if I need to yeah, that's okay that's fine this rock here has a very bold 
highlight edge, a uh, shadow edge. So it kind of comes around here into a groove there and then it sort of runs off to here, but then this whole edge is just dark. So just block in the color. If you're, if you're just about joining us, this is like one of those designs that is just gonna take a while to get to a point that you know, started to really come together. So if you're watching, just bear with the process a little bit and um, or, make, or even enjoy the process of how it will all come to life. You have to you know, get it all blocked in sort of first and then work from there. Go back in and add extra little highlights here and there, extra shadows and more contrast and it'll all come together. It's definitely a t-shirt I need to make and that is the Trust the Process t-shirt. I already have an idea for it so. Unfortunately it won't be in time for Christmas but I've got some ideas nonetheless. Scattering some smaller details here and there. Uh, Kevin says, I have a ticket open with Procreate support because I, if I ever open the keyboard with the pencil, I get the tiny useless keypad and I can get it to switch back to the big one. Do you know how you do that? A lot of the time how I randomly notice how to do that is I will tap with my finger, not the pen, on, you know, when the modal pops up with the text and you, there's a keyboard icon in the left hand side, I will tap with my finger and a lot of the time that brings up the keyboard, not the little one. If you tap with your pen on the keyboard button, it will come up with the small one. That's what I've recognised. Try that, potentially, or occasionally you have to just pop your pen down, unfortunately, and uh, go for it again. What's up, Jay? How are you doing? Good to see you. Hanging out. Oh, these rocks are going to take a while, aren't they? Let's block in the colours anyway. Carry on with that process. They have their basic block-ins, that's fine. When they get their shadows, that's also where this is gonna come around. Uh, folks, bear with me two seconds. If anybody jumps in the chat asking where I am, I've just gotta go grab my charger because my laptop is gonna die. So we'll chuck you on the be right back screen. I will be just a couple of minutes. Let me just go grab that. Speak among yourselves, of course. <clears throat> right, I am back. Let's get this plugged in. We need more power, Captain. We need more power. Ah, oh, there we go. Right. 
Is that working now? Cool. Right, I'll switch you back around because normally I would forget to do that. Lovely stuff. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Cool. So I think now, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? Do I want to do the rocks a little bit more? Yeah. I'm not happy with this colour here. This colour here needs to be a darker grey, 100%. It's far too bright. It doesn't give us any space to add in any details because it's it was in the base color is far 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 too dark, uh, too light. Should I say? Right, so we're just gonna block in some. I might do I alpha lock these? Nah. direction is always good creates different grooves it always looks really messy I always worry that people do these tutorials and again I say trust the process but you know they go what are we making here other than a mess you know I just love the leather wood for it. it's just leftover res residue kind of style it just leaves that little bit of detail in behind you can carry on then and just let that be and then maybe we go back in with that base color over the top The shadows afterwards will make that come to life a bit more, for sure. Do you know what, let's see if there's a better brush for this. What about the plimsoll? Because this was a really nice brush on that sand. I'm wondering if we can like layer that together, see what that comes up with. It's kind of nice, kind of nice. Uh, I was just testing, and if I get the cursor in the text field and tap the keyboard button, it doesn't do anything. I'm need to install. Oof. I'd have thought the 5.3 would have been out by now. Like, cause if if it's the optimized version for. Um, you know, the new uh, M2s, then I would have thought they'd have wanted that out pronto. Let's trust this process, let's trust this process. one here we can get into darkening up around these edges a little bit more again once we add the shadows I think of the ground uh, beneath it I think it will come to life a bit more because they don't just look like floating random objects then Let's actually be a bit brave though. Let's just really 
chisel out like a, an edge here like where it's just just complete darkness really in there it's a bit bold and it's a bit aggressive but it's kind of cool and then a couple of like random squiggles just to break that edge up maybe let's do that let's do that and repeat that for the others so blocking in this new gray that we used keeping a little bit of that residue left over from the previous sort of blocking in okay if I go to the font screen and then tap the keyboard I can get the big one so there's a workaround You want to just try and be like nice and squiggly in a sense because once you zoom all the way out the details get sort of crushed together anyway but just trying to block in the majority of the shape I'm squiggling in see this doesn't look like much on your screen right now I think we're going to use a, a good selection of brushes for this like um I think maybe like even the oil brush maybe afterwards just to really get those um, details in there and like a nice random amount of detail but for now we shall continue on What's everybody up to then? Are we all looking forward to Christmas? I know obviously we've spoken about it earlier in terms of people working, anybody else? We've got to start getting our our act together a little bit more with regards to getting all of our Christmas dinner ready because we've got family over so we are hosting we've host a lot Mrs Create she likes to host she loves the uh, the hosting side of things making it really festive and fun so we got to get an act together a little bit with regards to getting everything ready squiggle here I think there's a couple of random little rocks and stuff I'm trying to just block them in I think it gets really dark up here as if there's something else like just off the edge of the screen oh also this massive rock here Joel probably worth blocking that in as well um, let's do exactly that let's block that in it looks like there's some sort of light patch on the top I'm quite enjoying this plimsoll brush. I've not used it properly uh, other than there was a tutorial of sorts. I can't remember which one it was. Okay. 
Also, I've put myself under pressure on a stream sometimes because I always know I've got to get it done in a certain time, so trying to speed through it a little bit. Currently not too happy with it, but I say this every stream, so I need to take my own advice. Oh, you've got all your Christmas shopping done. I have not bought anything at all. Which is not good. Oh, and tell a lie, a few presents for uh, little ones, but nothing for Mrs. Create. Can you see this like canvas effect in the brush? Can you see that? Kind of like this little canvasy texture to it, which is quite cool. So it doesn't need too much love. Just the odd little scrape and scratch in the rock maybe. Just a couple of extra little details here and there. I'm very behind. Very, very behind. But I'm sure I'll, I'll get to it at some point. Okay, so we used the plimsoll brush. I'm going to take another screenshot of that just in case I hadn't already. Um, I want like a stony one. Maybe let's try and use like the hearts maybe and just see what this does for us in terms of you know, splattering on some texture. I don't like that one. Let's try them. That is the thing with Procreate is you don't want to do everything like just let the brushes do the work for you but finding the brush is tricky yeah see I initially thought the dry brush could maybe do us some justice fresco I wonder what that does for us Gives us some nice sort of swirls and stuff in there, but it might not be the right look. Tapentine's gonna be really painty, it's gonna be a bit too. Mm, it gives it a nice smudge look to it though, doesn't it? Very ah that's beautiful how that just like smudges in like that. Push the colour about a little bit more. keep that off for a second let's work out maybe the dry brush if we make this small enough it may be enough to drop in some grooves uh, color Almost, almost, almost gives me the impression I'm trying to to give. It's that random scattering of sort of details that I'm trying to work around. So just using a few different brushes, work out which ones give us the look we want. That one's good, but it's very heavy. You know, like I could block that in. It's got a bit of a texture already in the um, brush. So you could literally just paint Oh, that's actually a very pretty brush. Yep. Paint that back into here. It's literally painting on at this point, like a paintbrush would. Maybe reduce the colour of this one. Blocking that top surface again. Interesting. Very good looking brushes there. Where do we get to? I 
Not that. Not that one. Oh, Stuco, that's got a nice texture in it. That could be the one. That actually probably is the one. I'm gonna brighten that up just as Marie just suggested there. That would give us. So, I like that. Let's redo that. I like that a lot. That gives us a lot of very small details. Let's go Stuco. Stuco. I believe that's the one. And let's try using it to create more detail on the top of the rocks at a more random pace. So trying to just let the brush again do the work for us, add in like highlights here and there in random places that we're not in control of. And that's the best bit about it. You don't want to be in control of it all the time. Let it add in some color here and there if you don't like it. Switch the brush. Let's see what textures it can come out with. See how nice and random that is. That's the one. I quite like this part of the stream where, like, parts where we so you you can watch me sort of work through a process like that of identifying what it is I want out of a brush and then maybe in what to do potentially in your own work. Um, but definitely that whole. This is still, still too uh, bright. So again, going back to then the original conversation we were having towards the beginning of like picking colors and stuff, this one is far too bright. So, you know, this, we know that this is the base color for the rocks. So I'm gonna set that to a new color now, and I know I've now corrected that ready for next designs. So let's let's try and block in some of this nice stony look on top of all of this. I really like how that looks. Plus then the highlight color on top, and that gives it much more of a leg to stand on. And likewise, let's just block in some nice shadows in there too. It's a really nice brush, really nice brush. I think you all agree by the looks of the comments. Let it just do random little things like that. It's got quite a nice direction to it, as in it follows your direction of your brush. So you can do nice strokes in there like so, really create some big sort of grooves and cuts into the big rock. Creating some different areas of light and shadows. Let's put that back up. I think it was 4%, so we'll remember that. Okay, let's correct these rocks before we move on. I think that same brush is going to be really useful in the water too. Don't have to fill in every bit of the rock, just leave certain areas a little bit random, the breakup of colour. with the shadows, you could even run like something random like that into it and just leave it like a random stroke there just to show some like dark grooves in the rock. Much nicer. Let's be a bit braver then. Do little things like that. Little cuts across at different angles. Again, try and be brave. Little things like that. much much nicer much prefer that make sure not to make it too dark we go back in with base colors where we need to base color on top of the shadows will look nice and the difference between those textures and those like obviously they were just blocked in 
And that's what you should always do, is just block those colours in. Get them blocked in nice and early. And then just revisit them after. With the finer details, depending on what brush you're going to use, of course. Let's do that. Uh, let's block in this area here too. Let's try not to leave that shape. Block that in. Go back to the base, the new base color, this dark gray. Put that in the gaps. Break up those shadows a bit more. Blend the two in. Oh, I really like how, like at the back there, it kind of looks like it just rolls off into the uh, the sand almost. I think it, yeah, nicely blocks it in in a large chunk. I don't have to spend too much time meticulously working out where to put it. Zooming out again, trying not to get lost in the details. It's a tiny rock in comparison. It's, it's really leaving a really nice grungy look on the rock, which I quite like the look of. Uh, this tiny, tiny, tiny one here. Get that base color changed to this color. I like its shadows and highlights though at the minute, so I'm gonna not try to alter them too much. Just a little something, followed by again another little something of like the lighter tones on the top. Okay, really like that. I like how that looks. Let's roll with the shadows for that too. So they are set to 69%. Let's uh, roll with that. Okay. Yeah, cool. Do we make this nice, uh, the brush the same and blur that out? That's the question. So do we, what I mean is, do we use this brush to add in these shadows and then lower the opacity and gauge and blur them? Will it give us like details that we want in there? Does it give us anything that the medium brush doesn't give us? Also, I think that blur is a bit too strong. So I think we ditch this brush at this stage and we roll with the medium brush. Push down that area at the minute it's really dark so trust the process with me we'll push these shadows down light source is coming from the top uh, we've got to be brave with the, the size of some of these shadows to show how tall potentially some of these rocky areas are area here the top part of the rocks a little bit higher so therefore we get a bit more of a sort of less rounded shadow a little bit more of a pointy one here as well you can see there in the reference you see the shadow it like it's not like a curve obviously it's like point and then point which obviously shows us that there's a, a bit of a higher peak on one of these edges than the other one we'll roll with that Again, we're gonna gauge and blur it afterwards and also uh, lower the opacity so it won't be quite so strong. 
sort of fade some of these points out a little bit with like extra little line works like that okay let's go to Gaussian blur first of all try to distort them a bit more Ooh, what are we up to there 11 what if we lower that down a smidge about 8 Lower the opacity down to 70. Let's also maybe, maybe, maybe change the layer blend mode to something like overlay, which will give us some really nice shadows in the water that look that match up to the style. But I would argue that's not strong enough. Maybe like a multiply or a color burn or something like that is better because it will match the colors a little bit more. So you don't want like a black shadow in the water because you can see there that the shadow is not black, it's like a blue because it's dropping into the water. So we're gonna try and roll with that. Overlay is the one, but it's not very strong on the beach. So you'd have to maybe duplicate it a few times and then you end up with like really random burning of the colors. So we're just gonna see if there's an option here. Otherwise, I might have to redo the water ones just to get them to match up a little bit more. Okay, we'll lower the opacity down for a minute. We'll roll with that. Let's undo that until we get back to the original color. So one thing I want to point out that I don't like is the soft brush that I was using. It doesn't look that nice in terms of like quite nice angular details here and there. Well, um, so what I want to do is, is just sort of break up the top edge a bit more to make it a little bit more rough um, rather than a soft edge. So then that way it kind of looks a bit more edgy looks a bit more like the rock surface potentially rather than this soft looking um, shape that we created before. I'm going to change the shape of this one as well slightly I'm not too sure about that one because then you, you can see in this and you kind of want to make things consistent is looking at the other shadow the other shadow has got a good amount of detail in it it's got a good um, look of the trees and whatnot so we're trying to just match up to a uh, consistent level what the styling is i.e. that it should have a little bit of like a, a detailed edge to it or shape to it before blurring if that means I've got to adjust some of these I've got to you know, sacrifice a little bit of the shadowed space then that's fine for a minute that will do that should make them oh we missed one And also the ones in the water are fine because they'll get like a little bit distorted anyway by the water. So when we blur this out to something say about 4%, drop the opacity down again. That looks a lot better in terms of resembling more of a realistic shape. All right, should we start actually trying to get into some of these details in here, shall we? Let's. The beach is fine for a minute. We'll add the water's edge and crack on from there. So I might just go straight in. Let's go um, maybe medium brush, maybe. Looking at that photo, there's only a very thin line of white on the edge. That's so what we add in here. It's got to be really small, but you can always create your own 
Again, you don't have to follow any reference photo fully. Do whatever you want to do. How's everybody doing? Are we still awake? Are you still with me? Are we just watching the process? Are we are we bored? I don't say you're bored actually, don't don't come back in and say that. He's still here, not bored at all. Okay, cool. Trusting the process. Yeah, this one is a longer one than I was expecting. Um, but we did a bit of sort of, I would say, sort of development in there in towards that stage a second ago of um, trying to find a brush that gives us the effect that we want rather than um, sort of sticking with what I had. I wasn't too happy with what I had. So yeah, definitely a bit of extra time added on on that one. So this, I would always say with waves, it's kind of tricky to do, other than like right at the actual water's edge, it's kind of kind of easy. You just create like lots of um, overlapping lines essentially, but like they are relatively tricky to do in like areas like this, where you kind of got to block in a good chunk of like the broken up wave without just sort of scribbling a big block. Oh, like too much in one go. I'll be interested to redraw this one prior to maybe making it a uh, a, t a t word, the uh, a tutorial maybe. But it, um, yeah, it would be interesting to see how I could possibly refine this. Just break that edge up a bit more. Uh, Joel, why not use the chalk brush to do that white part? Should we do that? I don't mind doing that. Let's have a look. I like the medium brush. I like how kind of scratchy it looks. But let's try something like a chalk. I like the idea. Uh, where's the chalk brush there is? Now, you make a good point about the um, chalk brush because if we draw that in there, you're gonna end up with lots of little breaks in the brush. So that's a great suggestion because it will kind of give us a bit of detail without having to do too much, if that makes sense. So let's replicate what we were doing before, which was a very thin line. It's also nice and pressure sensitive as well. So if I feel like bulking in a big block of color, I can do. So we'll go with the chalk. It's a very good suggestion. Let's go around here too. And I'm just gonna, I don't know if I like this massive chunk of white over here. In comparison, it just doesn't look like it fits. I think I could do a better job of leaving it out and then maybe just sort of instead just blocking in another maybe break in behind sort of thing. Like a little something like that just to try and break that up a bit more rather than a random big blob of colour. And likewise over here I think I'm going to try and block in a little bit more. And definitely on this one here too where it is right getting a bit close in towards our water over here. Um, that's looking nice there. Irene, I was really, really struggling with the water line waves in the cave tutorial, but you make it look so easy. Well, this is not my tutorial, this is Milo's now. So Milo's suggestion of the chalk brush is bang on. It's a great brush to use for something like this. Um, yeah, that one I used the um, the leatherwood brush for, didn't I? I did that on purpose because it's quite far out. But yeah, I think a chalk. The, tr truthfully, the chalk brush is probably a better brush for exactly that. Um, that is under calligraphy. If anyone's interested, the chalk brush. Uh, reality can always be improved. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
Um, it's going to be really interesting to add in like these little bits here where the way, the water, you know, the sort of reflections of the light onto here. It'll look quite fun to do. And also we've got to add in all of the um, the groundwork over on the shallow area of the water. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just try and break in a big chunk of light area here and like definitely up against this sort of rock edge here where the water is you know going to be crashing up against this you know or some of the breaks maybe up against it we could even block in some white here and there um, we could be a bit adventurous and like push the water way up into here which would look really nice and come around that Edge. So where I drew in initially with um, the like water's edge with the sand, that's now acting as my guide. So I've got all of that. See, we made this sort of little drop in here. I can use this for something to add uh, a little bit of a breakage onto. The chalk brush looks great as well when you give it a good amount of pressure and make that nice and wide and just let that sort of run across, giving it a much more thicker edge to it. You can maybe even go back over yourselves a little bit edge to edge. Let's maybe bring in another wave just from the edge of the screen. That's something I always forget to do, if I'm honest, is add in um, some content that just sort of breaks in from the edge of the screen i always try to, i always end up sort of not really going towards the edges too much that's nothing on purpose it's just genuinely like just forgetting to kind of take the design all the way to the edge see what um you can fill in in those gaps sort of thing okay that's looking fine now for a minute uh looking at our reference photo every time we have a nice shadow uh, a nice sort of break line like that we have a shadow. So we wanna kind of be very careful with breaking in a little sort of shadow underneath. Now that's far too dark. So if we look at the water, we have a couple of different colors here as we get into these areas. So I think something a little bit like this where we could just, just, just pop in a little bit of a shadow underneath some of them, will just help them sort of stand off a little bit more give them a little bit more life. You can put them on both sides as well. You don't always have to put the uh, the shadow underneath the front. You can put it in behind as well. Maybe a tiny bit on that beach edge there. That one's actually a bit too light. We'll go with the, the darker tone again. something a bit more like that that gives your waves a bit more detail oh you're, you're joking God. we're losing power all over the shot today uh oh wow that's a challenging idea i should try drawing with just one brush yeah that's that's a tough one there um oh wait where did we get to i missed loads of stuff i think by the looks of it yeah. Chalk brush is a good idea. Kevin says I was watching an angry Miko video um, a while back and he talked about doing a painting with just one brush. Anybody ever try that? Um, I tried to attempt for you guys to do that as a drawing challenge once, a, do a doodle challenge. Well, I don't think many people took that offer up. Like try to um, do one of the doodle challenges with just one brush or like I think I might have even given the brush as in like uh, the name of which one to try and use okay let's try and I don't want to jeopardize that layer 
So we're gonna try and find a brush that I like the look of that will give us that watery look. I genuinely think the leather wood will give us the one I want uh, because it's a nice random scattering and if I do it correctly, we could end up with some like lines, not that small, like some darker lines in the water. Trust, trust me. Let's patch in some of this. We'll hack into it, it's on a separate layer on purpose. Let's see what we can just, just leave behind. Could even lower the opacity down of this. I'm trying to just give tiny little breakages in the lighter areas. Again, maybe even lower that opacity down just to get some variation in the colors maybe. And most definitely, let's try and do it with the brighter tone here and just see what we can maybe come up with. So I'm going zigzags to try and create those random reflections in the water. And then we do exactly the same, we grab the leather wood. And do a lot diagonal like this. And then I'm also gonna do a lot in the opposite diagonal direction. Try and break all of that up. And just see I think overlay might do this some justice, but let's have a look. So you might just about be able to see that now with the darker patches in there and the lighter patches, it does give us a little bit more of a sort of twinkle look to it. You could maybe make it a bit brighter. Can you see that? I think you can just about. I think truthfully what I would do is I would use those as reflections instead. Like on the surface, maybe grab, this is gonna be a nightmare, a hairbrushing. Let's grab the medium brush, make it really small and just go to town <laughs> on this. So this is gonna look nuts. At the minute, so what? Uh, let me explain what, what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> is by doing this all over the top, I'm trying to get those random bits where the light's hitting the top of the surface, and then these are the lines that are hitting underneath the surface. So if we were to set this to like a, a blend mode now, of sort, we might get a little bit of those reflections. If I turn those off above, uh, you would probably want to uh, gauge and blur these as well. Um, I mean, that actually looks quite good. And then just set that to gauge and blur. Blur them out a little bit because you don't want them very crispy because they're on the underside of the water, obviously. So we end up with like these. Um, that's going crazy, what the heck? Is that what you used to say, is it? looks kind of cool.
Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do actually. We will make it add and we'll drop, drop it right down because we have not yet finished with blending in the underside colors. So what I was thinking there for a second is I was like, it would be great if we could get more, um, like why it's not going like sort of turquoisey or anything. And it's because we've not done that yet. We've not gone back in here and I'm gonna use the soft brush instead. We'll keep it nice and light. Um, we've not gone in here yet and you know reintroduced some of those other colors. Now I think I have a layer that's on top. I do. That's a bit problematic unless I reduce this down. So what I'm trying to do now is just reintroduce some more of the greens in here occasionally just to break up the the, um, the water where it lands on the beach. You don't want it kind of like a straight line. You really want to change it up. Okay, that green's good. Then we get into this nicer green in these areas. It can sit around the base of these rocks. Definitely in these areas here too. We can maybe get a tiny bit in there. And then this is what I wanted to introduce is more green in here. Now I have to actually be careful because I can't go over the top of my breakages in the water. But this should look quite nice against those ripple lines. Okay, let's try and tackle this monstrosity of the water underneath. Um, there's a lot of colours here and I genuinely just think that this is going to be the most random scattering of stuff. Maybe fresco. Yeah, like a little random thing like this. That comes all the way under around here. Something that just gives us like a bit of a randomness to it, but is also got a little bit of a speck of detail in it. And looking at it, because it's under the water, it's also got like a bit of a ha uh, hacked away look at it a little bit. So we may nicely be able to just go straight in on with this and break that up with um, the leather wood potentially. Because that will give us the, uh, the wave kind of look for the top of it. Again, I'm not really at this point now trying to replicate each individual sort of area, every single rocky bit in there. I want to get through it, see what we can then adjust once we've got everything in place for the sort of foundation areas and stuff. There's no point going in immediately trying to paint in the exact color in each area individually it's going to take forever so just some breakages in the color with this beautiful tone here there's also like the lightest bit of yellow maybe on this layer here let's go back to airbrushing and the soft brush and just just around here it's very light just around these areas here Let's then grab the leather woods. Let's go back to this layer we made. And if we go across it enough, we might like, hang on, let's bring that down. Let's go down to about 50% and go fairly large and just go across it. If we look at the photo, the way the lighting's at the top, so it's coming down. So all the lighting, obviously, as you can see by the lighting on the, the sand and stuff. So if we were to literally just go across like this, it makes it look like all of these patches are light areas. Increase the brush up again, break that all down a little bit more. So it's a little bit more like that. What if we were to give that a bit of a vertical break in as well? Yeah. 
And what if we were to set the layer effect to like an overlay or something like that? So we get some more vibrant-ish colors. Interesting. Not a fan of that one as it stands. Oh, hang on, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go back, keep that all blocked in, but let's go back to the brushes we were using prior, which were, it wasn't any of them. And it was under artistic. We were using a brush earlier, not Plimpso. Maybe Rectango. That looks right. Uh, textures, rectangle. quite getting the color results that I want so let's work out why and let's try to work out how we can patch them in a bit more oh, I wanted something that was going to do a lot of the work for us under the water so we need to see what we can come up with what does Dove Lake look like let's clear that layer I think I'll, I'll start that again pretty much um, that looks like it could do the trick. It's got a bit of a round look to it, which kind of gives me the impression I'm kind of looking for. And then I think what I need to do is, is I do need to give a certain level of attention to uh, things under the water, like an occasional rock here and there, for example, or an occasional... Um, area that's probably a bit closer to the surface so I can't let the brushes do everything I'm gonna to have to do something in here and let's make sure that this level of detail goes up into this area here too we don't want this to be too soft so I'm gonna to try to get some in there but there's other layers on top which are causing problems so we'll come back to that this brush is definitely closer isn't it to the the real life photo there? Just trying to get the gauge of where things are, and then go back in with the other colours. So we'll grab this greeny colour, try and block in some green in these areas. Yeah, this brush is a hundred percent closer. What is this brush? It's Dove Lake. Let's move that across so I can kind of get a gauge what it was I was drawing in. This, I think, is it this colour? Yeah, this colour is quite the brave one where we've got to splash in some colour in these underwater areas a little bit more, be a bit braver. Grab this blue maybe, sprinkle it in the middle. I can also go back in shortly with a little bit of the sand colour and try to pop in a bit of that yellow because there's little bits of specks of yellow in here in and around some of these shapes so let's do that, let's do that. Just erasing the layer above here so I can Try. to paint in what I need which I think is just about 
doable now. Yeah. Ah, oh, lovely. So those shadows now are working with little sort of sp uh, splatterings of this brush a little bit more in those areas here, which is just making it look like there's a little bit more detail going on in there. So I've probably made my other layers a bit too close to uh, the rock area here, so I would have to go back. Now we're only trying to get like a light guide of this stuff under the water here. We're not trying to add in too much. We're not trying to add in too little, obviously, um, but we don't want to spend too much time adding them in because we might add like a little blur, but there's also going to be colors on the top that are going to sit in this sea area because we need to add in the ripples of the water both top and bottom so um, yeah we don't want to add in too many details in here well, not details but um, not spend too much time in them but like a little rock here and there just giving it the detail like this just to make it sort of stand off make it look like there is definitely something under the water but it's not quite as in, in sort of a uh, Focus, that's the other one. I'm kind of happy with that, how it looks. Let's go to adjustment, scars and blur, and get rid of it a little bit. Because I want the water on the top to do the talking. So that's gone to 5%. I'll take a screenshot of that, just so I can remember. And we'll go back in and we'll do the water on the top. So probably white. Yes, the waves are going to the left, but the light source is on the right, so we have to abide by the light source first, not the not the waves. Are we all still awake still? I feel like I have just spent so long on this, but I guess you're all hoping it comes comes to life. Not comes to life, but makes it. With these wave little accents here that are just, not wave, but the little ripples on the water that are just catching the light, you never want to go like horizontal, horizontal, horizontal. You always want to try and kind of vary your angle a tiny bit, but to the same degree every time. So you're kind of creating like a C shape, but not not like very angled down like that and too strong. Your, your main angle wants to be the one in the middle, but you don't want them all to be very horizontal. You get too much of a uniform look to it. When you add details like this on top as well, they always tend to make the underside look better because they are the underside there that I was just doing a second ago is literally just background filler for the, the fine in sharp in sharp, in focus details that are nice and sharp on the top. So let's try and continue to block in all of these. I'm going to bring them down a little bit more than what I had before. What's up, CC? How are you doing? Good to see you. How's life? How's the family? Are you looking forward to Christmas? try and go back over some of these to bulk out a couple of them but not a, not a lot of them you know just a few that are ever so slightly uh, more bulky and increase the size just in case we get the odd speck of a lighter much bigger brighter one And again, I think underneath we need to do like this random like squiggly bit just to um, 
break up the water. And I think I will come like a lot further down here, just because I think it was Kevin that said that. You can always make reality look better if you want to. And also, it's my design. <laughs> okay, that's looking better. It's facing our light source. We can maybe even uh, motion blur that a little bit left and right just to break up the, the brighter edges. What would up and down look like? Up and down's not sharp enough. We don't want it, we want it still slightly sharp in focus. Overlay looks nice because it's not fully white. Only a few of them are white. So zooming out, that looks a little bit better. Let's, uh, let's do a couple of those tricks that we did before. What's this layer? Let's do a couple of those tricks. So let's grab, say, the, the white again. Let's go airbrushing, soft brush, bring the opacity down. Yeah, let's try that. There's not really any logic to this type of thing. It's just getting the swells in and getting a consistency that you like the look of. I'm gonna see if there's a layer effect, otherwise it's just not gonna look 100%. Add at a very low level, could look very good. Gives us in some nice swells in there, which looks quite nice. Let's just roll through the others. Overlay looks good when it starts to bring in the other colors, which in my opinion is my favorite. Um, obviously, we're trying to avoid getting to this level of detail, truthfully. I'm trying to just keep it a little bit more simplistic. I don't want to get to that level. That's fine. I kind of like how that looks. Maybe just gosh and blur it because it's a little bit lower down, a little bit further away from the surface. We don't want it too defined. So a little bit something like that looks quite nice. That actually still makes that look a little bit rocky, which is nice. Then what I'm also going to do is go to my little wave lines on the top there, duplicate them. I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to flip it vertically, I'm going to flip it horizontally, and then I'm going to move it down a smidge. I'm going to invert it to black, and then just lower the opacity down to try and get some like shadows in those waves. So where it's like the light's hitting one side, it's, there's also a subsequent shadowed side if that makes sense so we'll try and try and get that working that does look good Interesting, interesting, interesting. I'm not in love with the whole thing. I'll tell you that for free. I think it's because truthfully, there's a lot of detail in the reference photo in comparison to mine. And then therefore it looks a little bit too simplistic. Arguably that looks nicer, just a much more darker contrast version. So 100%, so that's the only thing that I would say is, mine is a bit too faint. The shadows then are looking really washed out. Bringing in something like this, one is making the colors look a lot better it's making them one look a little bit warmer over here but also it's making everything a little bit darker which is just bringing our shadows closer to the overall look of the rest of the palette like i would arguably say that that looks better a lot more contrast in that than the original which is a little bit too washed out you see the difference here that difference is 
is uh, very obvious. It brings the colors a lot closer. So that that is, let's go back to the very beginning of today, which was picking the palette. What I would learn from that is that everything, I would have to like go into each individual color and change it in some way whether it's like increasing the saturation or increasing the brightness or in this case maybe darkening it up a little bit um, that's what I would do in this particular example um, this one looks far nicer now than it did a second ago with that extra little bit in there but like Jay said you're never going to be able to replicate fully a photo but in my opinion I want to be a lot closer than I am right now but there's quite a few different areas to like the beach is fine but then like getting the waves right in the shallow end they look good but these rocks are a lot smoother they're not quite so jagged i've not been quite as risky with creating like very aggressive sort of dips and grooves for example like in this rock here you can see the difference that this one's a lot smoother of a sort of top edge you have to be brave and put scatterings of like really small amounts of shadow here and there just to create much more depth and like miniature detail um, I like it but yeah not my favorite but you're, you're Marie's right you can be a very harsh self-critic sometimes not you guys me mostly so yeah I would learn from that to then adjust all these covers yeah, I wonder whether or not there's something as simple as this would do anything. It didn't. Oh, hang on. Let's actually go back because I want to. I don't want that layer to be deleted. What is it? Linear burn at 35. Okay. Uh, yeah. What else can we do to bring that around? Maybe address some of the things I don't like. The rocks. Let's do it. Let's be brave. Let's do exactly what I just said and let's just dash in some really aggressive details and see what we can do maybe even make a backup of the layer just in case so that we need something that is going to be nice and aggressive that's too like soft like small harsh small details what about aurora in this version that I made. Lots of small things when you zoom out like that look okay, but they're just like dots rather than like lines and grooves and whatnot. It's tough when you're not exactly sure what brush to use for it. Yeah, there's a fair few that you can try and make your way through, for, but there is a, a lot. Let's be just, no, I pop them on top. Let's just go with it, see what we can do, see what we can change up. Odd little random groove and stuff that is not normal shaped. Go back to just the base color maybe in some of these shadow areas. It's already looking a lot better. So that's just using the leather wood. Uh, adjusted by myself it's not the edited one that we've been using recently but a variation of it yet again um, with a nice random scattering that immediately looks far far more detailed Marie says, oh, the water is friggin' amazing. My husband didn't believe me when you did it from scratch. Oh, that's cool. I appreciate that a lot. You'd be absolutely right, Marie. But sometimes I personally can be a real nightmare of a self-critic. Wait, what's happened? Is this the same brush?
we can definitely build on top of this. This is much nicer, and I think, truthfully, a, design, a photo like this is a bit daunting to me at times because there is so much detail in like these rocks and stuff. It can be hard to like to think that that's manageable. If is it doable? This is a much much nicer look than it had a second ago because of just not just thinking there's a light side, there's a dark side, and that's it. it this is allowing me to just be a bit more brave, a bit more uh, aggressive with the highlights and shadows in a way that I'm not really in control of. I'm just letting the brush create whatever crevices and grooves and bumps and lumps it wants. Let's carry on. Sort of tapping away with this brush. I never did that top edge. Let's get that done before we finish. Let's dash into these again. When I zoom out, I'm far, far, far more happy with those now. They look a ton, ton better. Feeling a lot happier with that. And I guess that is a lesson to be learned, isn't it? In the fact that just because you don't like it immediately doesn't mean that you're actually far off of it being done, if that makes sense. Like you're not a million miles off. It was just one extra thing to do and then you're happy with it. So I guess that's a lesson learned. You know, you, the, the final happy version that you, you will be happy with is just around the corner. It's not, um, you know, it's not, uh, as far away as you think it is. If it were me, I'd be making a mess. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. I got you. zoom out happy with that that looks a ton ton better <sighs> let's do something else with the water line so this one's going on for a while but I want to get this right there's lots of random shadow lines in the water they're like little curvy lines in there which maybe is this color, but like turned all the way down. Maybe even plimps I'll just do something at random, but bring the opacity right down and do like little lines like that. Alec, uh, Alexander Gawoya has just become a patron over there. Thank you so much. Are you here? Are you here in the chat? If you're not, congratulations and enjoy the tutorials and welcome to the family. What's up, Brian? New to the channel. Uh, new to the channel, but I must say we need another adventure, Cooper. Listen, I know, I know, I know. Cooper? Oh no, do I want to spoil it? Okay, so Cooper, we revitalized the concept. I actually did it on a stream, um, but and I promised X, Y, and Z, and I'm fully aware people want Cooper. I told, I said to Mrs. Crate a little while ago, I was like, oh, I'm really struggling with ideas and whatnot. And then I think almost in the same conversation I said about Cooper, and she was like, well, if people want Cooper, why are you not doing it? And I'm like, ah, yes. Yeah, no, I, I know that's the answer. I just didn't want to hear that answer. The Cooper series frustrates me a little bit, um, but it's something that I know is it's something I want wanted to keep up. It's just like, sometimes I think, well, where is it gonna go? Um, not just where is it gonna go, but how how is this gonna develop in the future? Is Cooper gonna have his helmet, take his helmet off? 
is he going to do X, Y, and Z? I don't draw people, so I don't want to do that necessarily. I want it to be um, easy to do that I'm happy enough to continue doing it. If it gets into the point where I'm like trying to draw faces and I just suck at it because that's not my not my thing, I'm going to resent it and wish I'd never sort of maybe taken that direction and took his helmet off and stuff. Um, maybe Cooper will forever be in the large, the, the, like an infinite oxygen supply in that tank of his uh, backpack, I know, but I don't know. But yeah, that's a, that's a couple of things that just come to mind immediately when um, it's uh, it's brought up. But I am fully aware it needs to be done. So keep an eye out on the channel. I uh, That's all I'll say for a minute. Definitely keep an eye out on the channel. For sure. Cooper cooking pancakes. Enough said, lol. I'm sure whatever you do will be great. I appreciate that, Brian. Um, I'm glad you're enjoying the Cooper series. I don't sometimes realise how much love that series gets, which is a good thing, you know? I need to remember how much people like that series. The thing is with a silhouette version of Cooper, then that kind of runs into the same thing. You know, eventually I'm going to say well, why did he take his helmet off? You know, sort of thing. So, you know. Yeah, it's a tricky it's a tricky balance of what I, what I can do versus what we can, where we can take him, I guess. So, um, also that little color change there has really changed that underwater section on the right. Hang on, let me go back to it eventually. See that? And I just went to the curves and just darkened that up a little bit more. And for me, that looks a lot, lot better. What if we were to duplicate that and just gauge and blur it for a second? I think. Okay. Uh, let's let's also have a, another point actually about Cooper. And this is something I'm kind of annoyed I ever sort of took on board with regards to someone's feedback. Um, but it kind of really harshly planted a seed in my head and I really wish it hadn't. In some of my earlier tutorials, there was a lot of stamp using. Rightly so. And I'm glad I did, I don't care. But people... Someone once who was quite close to the community was talking with another member publicly about it in a subtle way. And the comment was something along the lines of um, about the tutorial, but then saying more stamps if you know, more stamps if you know you know. And so I saw that and was just like a bit like brutally annihilated by it because it was like sh shit are people like talking about this as a scenario that they just can't stand and like it really like annoyed me because it made me think it's hard enough doing YouTube sometimes without someone then sort of you, you know people are sort of have got uh sort of um how can i put this what they think are personal jokes but then like it like insider jokes that's what i'm looking for insider jokes when they're not like they're blatantly obvious to read and understand when you're the person that you know that they're about so that was in the early days because i used to use the stamps i wanted to make i've always wanted to make tutorials that anyone can do yes at the minute they've started to go down different directions of um like you know more intricate paintings here and there and stuff like that but back then it made me a bit like annoyed about using stamps and cooper will forever be a stamp series i'm not having someone do a tutorial and spend a ton of time trying to draw an astronaut's costume when 
it's like gonna take up a shitload of time in a tutorial and that's not the point of the whole thing it's just like a really easy fo to follow along series um so yeah it's like uh they yeah that comment kind of just sort of hit me a little bit and i was just like really miffed off about it um and it shouldn't have truthfully but it did and i ignore a ton of comments that are just like not a ton actually truthfully let's be honest it's like one percent of people but sometimes it's easier to focus on negatives and it's positives but i'm not like that as a person but when i saw this especially in the early days and you like you're doing youtube and you think like you get phases where you're like um, this is like imposter syndrome um you know should i even be doing this can i compete and then you got people talking like that and you're like man i'm just trying my best out here like to do the series but it did take a bit of a shine off of when i use stamps and stuff so um even stencils as well people get really assy about stencils when i provide them and it's like again you're forgetting the point just because you can do it i try to create tutorials for everyone I try to create people, tutorials that anyone can do or like at least help them on their way to doing that whether it's just like a stencil here and there just to help guide line work and guide you as you learn to you know um, create lots smoother lines and stuff like that and, and whatnot so um, yeah it um, it can be frustrating when you see comments like that but yeah to take a shine off of doing anything with stamps but that's not to say um i'm i'm fully aware that cooper will continue to be a stamp series it always has been and it always will be in terms of a dropping in a new cooper stamp on um new item uh, every time he features again in a tutorial so um yeah i just need to kind of block that out i guess a little bit and move on from that a bit because <laughs> it doesn't help anyone in any way Yeah, people just don't realise, like, especially, like, with comments like that, that you just do this for fun. Like, you do this for fun. I was thinking about this um, recently because I've got a couple of ideas of what's going to happen next year. And you'll see a video soon that's going to come up explaining what's happening next year with everything. And um, I was thinking about it in that. Uh, a few things in that sort of thing and like i do this because i want to do this this isn't doesn't feel like a job it, it it does time wise but it doesn't feel like a job it is um very much i like to i want to create what i want to create and if people like to follow them they like to follow them and that's what i've always done and um yeah that's something i need to just remember from time to time Myla says, um, the series is about composition and development and a story. People are annoying about stamps or stencils. People are so annoying about stamps or stencils. Uh, yeah, you're right. And it was like, it's the first, it's genuine. I, I, without knowledge of any other one, it's the first of its kind. It's the first thing I wanted to do something and I will always continue to do this with my um, channel is I want to, I want to do things here and there that are different. I want to do things that like, move the space maybe in a different direction i've done that so many times like out of all your life out of all the people you probably follow i don't know how many of them live stream like and get to know their community like again i wanted to do that um not just live streaming like i'm not trying to say like i am the answer to moving it forward but you can inspire others to then also take that on board and move it forward as well um but live streaming for you guys which i love doing We've got the live streams, we've got an Adventures of Cooper series which was initially designed where rather than you do a tutorial one week and it's completely separate from the one you get the week after, we then create another one every month or whatever it will be that has a cohesive storyline in the middle and you can follow along in a cool adventure. And yeah, it was the first one of its kind. I don't think anybody else has done it and I'm quite proud of doing that. But. I know, I bloody know, I need to get it going again, 100%, and I will. Um, I think I, I I will have to drag Cooper out as long as possible without him taking his helmet off or anything like that. And I don't really want to take his helmet off because I don't want to draw faces. It's not something I draw. I don't have the time to spend, like, sort of learning the process to do so myself, unfortunately. So, yeah, we'll... Uh, 
we'll see where Cooper comes back, I promise. But keep it out on the channel for sure. Um, and Instagram, Brian, if you're new to the channel, if you follow me on Instagram, I pop stuff on my story here and there as well, so uh, be sure to check that out. Right, let me catch back up with where you were, because I know I was just rambling on. Uh, Jay says, I know it's, I know, but it's fictional. There could be oxygen on dimen uh, dimensions, or maybe he could get his helmet uh, knocked off and has to fight, has to quickly fight to get it back on. Yeah, something like that, maybe. Uh, Marie says, we're able to get uh, more done without putting so much time into an astronaut. Exactly, and you'd be drawing an astronaut every month for a new episode, it just doesn't make sense. Irene says, as someone who is not an artist and not very good at drawing, I really, really appreciate both stamps and stencils, to be honest. They mean that I can actually complete a tutorial and have fun doing it. Irene, I really appreciate that. And that is exactly what I aim to do, is that it will aid people to create something that maybe they would feel uncomfortable drawing straight, you know, from scratch. So that's the exact purpose. Brian says, I am a hobby artist and that goofs around on Procreate. I don't have any time nor skill to draw an astronaut. I am a-okay with stamps, kind of simple. And if they don't like your content, then they can move along. Absolutely, Brian, for sure. Uh, Jay says, yeah, I love the stamps and stencils. Brian then says, it's not like every tutorial of yours uses stamps. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I've drifted away from them a little bit anyway. Um, but for sure, they've definitely tried. I've definitely tried to um, move on from them a little bit. But I was talking to Mrs. Crate about this today. Like I've seen a bit of an uptake with Patreon as well towards the end of this month. It always I've noticed a repeating pattern now. I'm trying to look at data between like last year and this year and gauge how like things move. We all see an uptake in Patreon at the end of the year. Um, but I think then also it ties in potentially to some of the tutorials that have been coming out lately, which are pretty cool. Um, and moving the skill skill window a little bit further up. But at the same time, I was talking to her about it and like, I don't want to then move away from doing designs that are easier and simpler because I want to create a catalog that is from beginner to the limit of my skill set, you know, sort of thing. So everything and in between. Um, so some weeks they may be easy on YouTube and sometimes they may be a little bit more daunting and a bit more difficult, but there'll also be stuff in the middle. So, And that's always what my Patreon's always been like as well. Everything in between. Milo then says, I like stamps and stencils. Why not use them? Uh, I love to do painting and detail things too. The new process of painting is a joy to do. However, doing an artwork with stamps are cool too. Exactly, exactly. So there's a lot of variation, isn't there? There's a lot of variation. Um, we, I've subtly sort of, as I've been uh, whining and complaining about something that's not really worth whining and complaining about, I've been adding in some little details here and there in this little beach design. We could also add some stuff in on the beach, um, such as like, um, there's lots of like debris and stuff from the trees above, I believe. Um, so we could maybe just sort of spec in some little random spots in here of like debris. If we actually lower that opacity down and make that a little bit lighter, I want it to stand off from the tree above. So these are like bits of branch, bits of things that have fallen off or sea wood and etc that have just collected. Let's also give this a shadow. I've just noticed that there's not really much of a, or actually that shouldn't be like that. It's already in the shadowed area, so it wouldn't have a shadow, would it, John? No, it would not. And some specks of stuff here and there that are just up and down the water's edge. Just little sprinkles here and there. So it says, you've been doing a lot more detailed scenery lately. Yeah, for sure. I get quite fixated on like a style when I like it and then continuing on with that for a little while and kind of exhausting it a little bit. But also when I feel like something is pushing my skill set personally, I will continue to pursue it in the hope of it, um, you know, being something I really learned to refine. So yeah, I've definitely, Definitely try to keep it going a little bit more. Uh, 
And again, I really like it. Like, I like that style. I like all of it. I like um, the painting-ish style that we've been doing recently because one, it gets a great reception and two, again, I feel like it's really pushing my skill set, which is really nice. You know, I'm kind of flexing my own sort of strengths a little bit, not on anyone else, as in like flexing them for myself, you know, trying to test myself where we push here and there. Letting me know that there's more in the tank, there's more that we can do. There's still different styles and stuff. Like I'd love to like do a whole month of like watercolor or something and really put it in and learn and try different bits and bobs. So. You know, like little things like that are something that we, we may get into later on. This is looking really cool. That looks far better now with all that sort of more uh, little specks of what looks like kind of rock and whatnot. Little bits of stuff on the beach, sort of whatnot. Even lower the um, linear burn down a smidge maybe. This is looking far better over here. Uh, Joel, you are pushing in your skills. Uh, we we're on this journey with you too. I, I, again, that's something I always forget as well. It's like, I'm still learning. You never stop learning and you kind of like, although I'm doing this to provide content for others, I also need to make sure I'm learning, like you just said, and pushing myself. So yeah, it, uh, it's great. It's a, I always, I don't know, maybe I think about it too much, but there's lots of stuff I like to think about with the whole thing and progression and stuff like that. There's stuff coming next year that are gonna, it's gonna test me not only, um, not skill set wise, but it's gonna, well, it is gonna test me skill set wise, but it's also gonna test me uh, workload wise and uh, commitment, which is good. So nothing to worry about, but we, um, there's plans coming for next year and there'll be a video coming up soon about it and how things are gonna change. For the better. I don't want to give the at all a tiny glimpse of what's what it's going to be, but yeah, it's going to be cool. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a, a bit of a risk time-wise, but we'll see how it goes. Thank you, Jay, I appreciate it. I like, I do and I don't like that certain bits under the water are like blurred out. I kind of like it. I mean, if I hadn't looked at that and I looked at that, I'd be like, oh, that's a really cool tutorial. Like that's a really fun idea. Um, like as a, if I, if I made that as a tutorial, I'm sure everyone would like it exactly as it is. I have absolutely no idea how that is gonna ever be a tutorial. <laughs> just time wise if I go back and I was um, to work out which one sorry if I was to go back and like work out where I corrected things uh, this would be a com probably a ton quicker we're, we're nearly at the three hour mark so what's up Kevin good to have you back you said which one is the photo now yeah so definitely the one above there's a lot more detail in the top one and uh, obviously I've not followed it key by key uh, and piece by piece, but I don't like the the trees on the left either. They they were the first thing that were, that happened, and truthfully, they could probably do with like being um, uh, adjusted. But I'm not I'm not going to do that now. I like it with the linear burn. It looks like a really nice filter on top. Um, definitely gives it a much uh, warmer look to it, which looks quite nice against some of the. Um, cool blues and greens and stuff. I'm sure there's more I could do in terms of like the procreate process that I normally do, such as you could give these rocks like a, a light source glow. I always like to, we did this in the, um, the seascape one, the cave one. You know, you could just give things a light gloss of like lighting just to show a little bit more on there maybe just to soften them up that's just a something we could do but we 
you don't want to go softer. So, it's an idea, not for that one. So I always do this just to go through different layers because I like to see if I can maybe adjust colors in a different way. So this overlay looks quite nice because it makes everything a bit more high contrast. You get much brighter edges to the rocks but also much darker shadows. Um, looks nice, whether or not it's too strong I don't know, like that looks a lot lot softer now but that looks a lot brighter and darker at the same time, like more contrast. So maybe something in between and then I would go in there now and grab those colors instead so if you were to set this to overlay as well and drop that down what does that look like that looks great I'm happy with that oh this is what I was talking about right at the very beginning again I'm trying to sort of stick in the whole process that right at the beginning I was explaining how I would do something from start to finish we drew in a layer if I hold this down we drew this layer in. This was just blocking things in nice and lightly. You know, the transition of a few greens into the water, into the sand, the rocks were these light gray and the, the dark color there. Um, if I turn that layer off, this is what I'm talking about. The wash in the background is on purpose so that when we turn that off, all this white is just empty space. I've not put anything in this area. There's loads of space in the trees. There's the odd little patch here in the in the sand. So you put that wash in so that everything has something to sit on top of. So you only have to add in what you need to add to the design, not the oh, not fill in each pixel. It's hard to kind of explain, but when you when you add it in on top of the wash, the wash is your filler. And then you can just add in the details on top. That's all you need to do. So you block it in first with the wash kind of in the background and then just add your details on top and they've got something to sit on and all the gaps are filled in because you already did the blocking in of the colors. Um, so that is a, uh, a little technique to try and make sure you try to replicate in your own stuff. Anyone got any questions or anything? Any questions about Procreate, Joel Create, me, anything? too bright I think questions or anything oh who started the um the snow cabin one the snow cabin tutorial over on uh patreon did i even tell you guys that we hit over 300 patrons i can't remember usually i do like i used to do like a little post for it over on um, like instagram or something and draw something but i never did it but uh, yeah, we hit 300 patrons, which is nuts. And it's a great end to the year to be on that and to try now to progress past that and into the 300s with the goal of maybe by the end of next year being on 400 sort of thing, which is awesome. Every every little step closer to maybe making it a, uh, yeah, a career, a full career. Kevin says, I saw someone put uh, the snowy cabin on Instagram. That was Alturus, I believe, if it was earlier today. Smashed it, as always. Oh, and then if you are a patron as well, the last tutorial, I, I rearranged how this month was going to work. The month was originally going to be the snowy cabin to start. Um, another design in the middle and then followed by the chapters design at the end but my concern was is that 
I know that over the Christmas, when it gets closer to the Christmas period, people get busier and busier and busier, and you know, hobbies and stuff take a back seat, and you have to, there's so much going on, you ain't got the time. So I brought the chapters one forward to the start of the month so that people have got so much time to maybe get it done and finish it, um, so that they have something to maybe post on Instagram or anything like that. Um, and then the, the final one is not a filler, but it's like the one in between the two significant ones of the um, cabin and the chapters design, the books design. So um, that will be with you next, not next week, but the week after, just before Christmas. Everything's coming at the start of the month. I know, for example, like Marie said this before about, you know, not trying to give them all back to back. But I think with December, it's a bit different. I want to get them all out for you guys you can get them done prior to Christmas because then I know it's hectic and even if you don't have any time to do them now you may do it the other way around where you don't have time to do it now but you've got time to do it in say the Christmas period if you've got time to yourself sort of thing um so yeah we're gonna we're gonna roll them out and then get ready for January which it's not that far away is it at all and get some stuff done for that crack on with a good start to the year hmm. what's quite interesting about this oh sorry I missed um, I saw somebody put it on Instagram yeah and yeah that's right I still haven't finished the original cabin Jeez. I don't know how I feel about two-part designs either. Like some, they make me a bit daunted, uh, a bit nervous, and they're a bit daunting because they. Um, I know it's like because they're two parts. That it's more of a combined total time to get them done, and like the first one's what an hour and a bit, plus 58 minutes for the second one. And it's like jeez, like just to get both these done is like, or to get the the cabin in the woods project done from both parts is like a good chunk of change in terms of time wise so so yeah they uh, they do make me a bit a bit on edge a little bit anyway i think we are at nearly at the three hour mark so i think we're going to wrap it up there uh, this week's youtube channel um design is obviously if you're a patron is a nice little christmas design one there's a really cool one coming next week uh which is something i actually drew like in January not January in July because it was like a prompt on an app and um, I have just had it sat in the in the sort of um, stack of images for ages so I've now got that recorded and uh, that'll be up next week another sort of Christmas design but with a bit of a twist um, something a little bit funny at the same time potentially um, so that's coming next week and uh, we've obviously got all the fun stuff over on Patreon, um, like the chapter, the book design for the end of 2022, and another one coming the week after that. So I'm not sure how many Christmas designs I'm going to do, to be honest with you, and I'm not sure how if there will be like a end of year design for YouTube. I don't think there will be. I don't like to flood, like. Uh, the the market with them essentially or do too, do too many of them basically I like to maybe keep things moving a little bit normal at the same time um, yeah there's a I've got to get a couple of different videos done um, pretty quickly having looked at the time not the time the date that's a little note to self. Anyway, let's wrap that up there before I start rambling on. Guys, as always, thank you so much for hanging out with me here on your Wednesday evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are in the world. I always appreciate you guys hanging out with me and uh, spending a little bit of time just to drop in and say hello, even if you're just in and out. It's, uh, it's awesome to see so many faces and new faces every single time as well. So um, just to point out a few, we've got Carrie, uh, Brian as well who was new to the channel so just anyone if you pop in and say hello I really appreciate you doing so and uh, hanging out with me as always we've got two more streams this year and then we will be off for a little while probably back like maybe mid January um, probably so probably mid end mid December 
well actually it'd be the 21st of December wouldn't it it'd be the 21st of December would be the last one and then we'll break till like mid mid January before we come back for some streams um, nothing else enjoy the rest of your day guys thank you so much for hanging out as always please be sure to drop a like uh, on the video drop a like on every video you see of mine that'll be smashing um, and I'll see you all again next week same time and uh, also let me know in the comments down below if you like this thumbnail that will help the that will help the video out a lot so let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this thumbnail thank you so much for hanging out and I'll see you again next week guys